Yeah, it's showing that this is the account I'm using. This is yeah. I've switched. You switch one. Mm. So if I you switch then you should take it to the page. No, this is now my page. So you are now acting as Rodolfo mm -hmm. so I switch. It's showing the mission page and that's so I posted this for today. And um I want to start the program from where you can go back. Saying I need to switch to Ruda Office to continue, mm -hmm. which is not supposed to be so. It's not supposed to be so. Let me notify some more. Okay. Um, do some other stuff. So just try to see if you can set okay. it. Okay. Um, can I just let me? Know? Yeah, sure. What's the name? What's the name of American species? Okay. okay, I'm coming. Okay, I'm coming. Let me just connect this. Hi, Mr. Joe. Good morning, sir. Yeah. So um um I I Olu, Olu yeah, just left here. So he has we've logged in, but then I'm um, in trying to go live on Facebook. It's saying that um I need to switch to my personal accounts to continue. Okay, I had to switch. Okay. Okay, so I can click on continue. Okay, so continue as Ruda, right? Sorry. My bad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, but you know that. Okay. Yeah, I got the promise. So I'll select um the US US mission page. Okay. Um Global Entrepreneurship Week. Okay, description on Facebook. Okay. Okay. So it's not going to stream on my personal page, right? okay okay so it's saying share on your own timeline share to your page share to your group okay, so let's page us mission nigeria okay same all right thank you very much yes also
participate. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for coming today on yet another exciting program of Global Entrepreneurship Week. And like you all know, this is a long week program for us. And you know, you all know that we also we actually commenced this program yesterday, uh, looking at youth specifically on how we can actually include youth in entrepreneurship in our various um, locations. Uh, but today, uh, specifically, we'll be looking at gender gender equity in entrepreneurship, which is a sub team that focuses on pro promoting gender equality and women's empowerment in mm -hmm. entrepreneurship in West Africa. It aims to remove gender-based barriers, biases that hinder women and girls girls' participation in entrepreneurship and create an inclusive environment that welcomes, welcome and support female entrepreneurs. Today, I am privileged and honored to have two important guests in our midst. I will quickly introduce them by reading their bios, uh, then I will call on my colleague to uh, engage them to go ahead and moderate the program. I'll first start with the biography of ADBC Odele. ADBC Odele is a multi award win winning entrepreneur and gender equality advocate, the president of the Academy for Women Entrepreneur Alumni Association of Nigeria. Her passion lies in youth and women empowerment, particularly in financial inclusion. ADBC founded Moray Organics, a leading sustainable sourced skincare organization in Nigeria, and has received numerous awards and scholarships, including a World Bank scholarship. She's dedicated to the education and empowerment of girls through the Bimora campaign in, in undeserved communities and actively contribute to women's entrepreneur and women's entrepreneurship initiative. At DBC, is an alumni of various prestigious institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Ade BC Odile. Our second speaker for today is Hadra to Makaila Godakui. Please, <laughs> I beg your pardon if I don't pronounce your name right. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, I'll go, okay, I'll go is to uh okay let me start this way mm -hmm. she she is passionate about giving young girls young women the opportunity that she never had she's a she's an entrepreneur a mentor trainer influencer firmly established in maradi in Niger. her her jato has to drop out of school as a teenager but she Went back to school at the age of 33 with a desire and eagerness to become a self-reliant successful entrepreneur. After completing two years worth of school work in one year's yeah. time, she launched ABC Center, an environment, an environment dedicated to training young women in integrated entrepreneur skills. Most of her students are women who had have who, who had had to leave former school into middle and high school. Throughout one academic school year, students at ABC Center learned a wide variety of skills, including sewing, manufacturing, lead, manufacturing leather goods, interior decoration, cosmetics, beadwork, and even cooking. Most importantly, though, Mrs. Mrs. Hadra teaches the women how to efficiently manage their small businesses, sell their goods, and raise money. Her ultimate objectives are to empower women, fight against poverty, and promote entrepreneurship to improve, to, to improve Niger. For her extraordinary work done in the region of Maradi, ABC Center CEO Mrs. Hadra won various awards and was granted various recognition, including being anointed. Ambassador of Youth Entrepreneurship for the region of Maradi. 
She is a member of the steering committee of the National Association of Professionals of Leather, Leather Product Manufacturing too. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's put our hands together for Hajra tonight. Hajra, it's good to have you on our program at ABC. It is, you are both welcome to uh, American Species in Nigeria and the whole West African program. Uh, like you can see, we have people who have joined this program, not just in Nigeria, but also uh, most part of West Africa. And they are here to, to listen to you and, and learn from you. And I would want to, at this point, call on Professor A. Tayo to moderate this program. A. Tayo, over to you, please. Thank you, Dan. Uh, we really appreciate um, uh, your coming on this program, and we appreciate all your commitments, uh, particularly our speakers who are here today at DBC and Hajaratu. Very, very grateful for your coming. Uh, you will be given just between 10 to 15 minutes to do a presentation on the topic from your perspective. And um, after which we're going to engage you in Q&A session. And we encourage all our, our participants to please get set your questions and um, please let your questions inspire more learning. Uh, as we go into all this um, the discussion. Uh, so I would like uh, DBC to start the presentation, after which I will call Ajaratu to take the floor, and then we go ahead. But before we do that, I want to emphasize the importance of this program, particularly the theme for today, gender equality in entrepreneurship. What are those gender-based barriers and biases that hinder women and girls' participation in entrepreneurship? We would like to learn creative ways on how to bring inclusion in such environments that are hostile, particularly to women. And as we go into all this discussion, I'm glad we have women, especially Jigawa, I uh, do say, let's clap for Jigawa. The women came out powerfully. And um, I really, I can see about you. They're more, more like men only. Okay, we understand that. They will speak to their women. But we thank everyone who has come. And we thank particularly our speakers. So uh, at ABC, I would like you to begin um, to tackle this uh, question and then um, see how far we can go. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Eitayo, um, for the opportunity to join everyone out. I, I want to appreciate the US and Nigeria for celebrating this program with entrepreneurs across West Africa, most importantly. Uh, this is a big deal because it shows your thoughtfulness and your sincere genuineness to see businesses thrive. And I would also want to welcome every entrepreneur on this call, whether you are a male or a female, but most importantly, I'd like to welcome women entrepreneurs to the Global Entrepreneurship Week in West Africa. Um, I'll be looking closely at how we can promote gender equality and um, women empowerment in entrepreneurship and also see how we can break the stereotypes that women face presently. And you know, even how we can raise funds as women entrepreneurs in an hostile environment like this, just like Mr. Itayo rightly said. You know, if we look at our region so closely, we would know that our region is very rich with talent and potentials. However, the situation of things have made us look as though we don't know what we are doing. But this is a call to action. This is a call to uplift each other. This is a call to celebrate even my sister from Nijay. Hearing your story this morning, I was really encouraged with your grit. And this is also to make everybody on this call realize that it doesn't matter where you are from or where you are right now, you have the capacity to change. Um, so my conversation is going to be going around all I've listed and how we can champion equality to provide platform for women, you know, support one another and create an ecosystem of entrepreneurs who dare to dream big, irrespective of what they are facing right now and what they are going through and who are ready to take the bull by the own and make 
you know, a, ch a change in the various places that they are in. So with that being said, I know I have um, 15 minutes, but I'll just try as much as possible to run through some of the things that I know that it is, um, that has helped me, you know, over my years of entrepreneurship. The first one is understanding the different platforms of um, resources for women entrepreneurs to grow. But before we even get there, I'm going to be using Nigeria as um, a case study because one, I live here and I see how, you know, businesses are being done in this part of West Africa. Would it surprise you to know that 23 million, we have 23, over 23 million actually, over 23 women, million women entrepreneurs in Nigeria alone? Over 23 million. And um, the last uh, data analysis I saw shows that we have 41% of entrepreneurs in the micro and um, small scale that are women in Nigeria. However, three months ago, the CBN said that um, Nigerian women have closed the gap by four, four more percent. So if we have about 30, 42% before or 43% before plus four, that means we have 47 women entrepreneurs. But the thing is this entrepreneurs still do not have access to a lot of things as our male counterpart. And uh, the concerns differs. And um, today we're gonna to be talking about some of the concerns, some of the stereotypes that we need to break as women so that we can, we are not competing, but we are using and unnessing our power in ways that can yield massive results. So one of the, one of the major, I guess I can see you from just 47 in SME and a micro, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So if you have anything to, I'll just drop it in the chat box, I'm going to be engaging with you. Um, so in your country, if you're outside Nigeria, I would like to make this as engaging as possible. If you're outside Nigeria, do you know the percentage of the women entrepreneurs that you have in your country? Just drop it in the chat group, you know, in the chat room, and I would see it shortly. So now uh, the first thing we need to know as women is, um, if you're in business, the first thing you need to know, what are the platforms that you have to, as resources to you? Because you cannot just wake up to say you want to be an entrepreneur. I mean, a lot of us wake up to say we want to be an entrepreneur. We can start out that way, but when it comes to growing, you need to understand the resources available to you to learn, to grow, and you know, to scale. Those three things are very important, you know, and I'm gonna be sharing some of the women entrepreneur networks with you, where you can tap in to learn, to grow, and to scale. The first one, I'm so unbiased, is AWE. I would like you to um, go back, check your, after this class, after this session, go back and Google if AWE is in your country. I can't overemphasize it because Academy for Women Entrepreneurs is one of the platforms that changed my life as an entrepreneur. Aside from the fact that it gave me um, deep understanding of how to run a business through the dream builder um, platform i had network access to women entrepreneurs because the truth is um having interacted with different women across different african countries um i have come to realize that we share almost the same challenges and as such it is very important that we are able to demystify whatever situation it is that we are sharing and see how we can leverage on each other. So for instance, I was talking about AW, how it's created a network of women entrepreneurs for me. Women that are doing sometimes the same, sometimes doing different things, but we, we face about the same thing. And so we are able to relate on a new level. I mean, someone that works nine to five might not understand some of the struggles that we face as entrepreneurs. So having that network of you and you knowing that you're not alone in this journey, because I trust me, entrepreneurship is a journey that could be lonely at times, but having that network of women helps support you. So you want to go back to your country to see if AWE is um, available for your country, and then you register for the next cohort of it. Um, because AWE is in over 100 countries, you know, as at the last time I, I researched, so you might just want to leverage on the network. Because at, even at the end of the program, you'd have access to your you know, business plan, and then AWE has another platform, a, a partnership with um, USADF, where you can have access to grants, a signal of about 5,000 US dollars. So you want to be in that kind of network. The second network I will be talking about, where you can get resources. I'm talking about where you can get resources as an entrepreneur, a woman entrepreneur, most especially, is ITC, International Trade Center, 
the Sheet Rates is another, another, another amazing platform. They work with different countries. Um, recently, I was on a cohort for Sheet Rates for people in the share butter um, value chain. And I was seeing people from other African countries. I think there's someone from South Africa. We have people, we have people from South Africa, from um, I think Morocco, from Zimbabwe. And it's just so amazing to see different women from different African countries that are doing about the same kind of business. Beyond the learning, you can also leverage on collaborating with them across board. The raw materials that you have in Nigeria, you can exchange with somebody else. You know, it's just amazing what we can do together as women entrepreneurs. Another platform where is um, you, can, you can have access and get resources is the Tony Elumelu Foundation, which is, now this is not gender sensitive, um, it is for both male and female, is a pan-African platform as well. Another one is Future Female. Um, it's, uh, it's another amazing platform where you can have resources. In Nigeria, you know, we have Shikluded, who is also um, an AWE lady. Um, she does amazing, amazing, amazing things with women community. She has community of women. There's, an, there's another one, She Innovates, where it's also another community, you know, of women where you can leverage, you can network, you can learn. In Nigeria, we have um, Flourish Africa, which is um, owned by Mrs. Polon Rosho Alakija, who is the, um, one of the richest women in Africa. She has that foundation where she, you know, she trains, she empowers, and then she gives seed funds to entrepreneurs. And of course, if you stay in a place like Lagos, you have um, LSETF. Um, LSETF is Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, where you have resources as an entrepreneur, you can employ, government pays, you know, for a certain amount of your, for your employees. They have trainings, they have a lot of resources at your disposal. So one of the things you are going to do at the end of this class is to go online and search for the offers that are available, the resources that are available for women entrepreneurs. First for entrepreneurs, and then you narrow it down to women entrepreneurs. Because I tell people sometimes, even if it's a grant um, program, and um, eventually if you don't happen to get the grant, but you're in that community, when information is being circulated in the future, someone is going to drop it in that community. You are somehow in the in the group. You know what is happening part time. And as women, we have to leave our comfort zone. We have to leave our shells. We have to go out. If they, if they don't, um, like my friends will say, if the, there's no table for you to join, create the table. Deliberately stand up from your comfort zone and, you know, see what you can do differently. Um, so briefly, I'll be also be talking about the next major thing, which is um, women empowering women. So how can we as women empower each other to ensure that we are... You know, we are moving and progressing. One of the major things we have to do is to collaborate within and outside our industries. And I, I emphasize this because collaboration is the new competition. Um, over the years, I think from 20, 2016, 2015, I decided to identify some of my industry sisters. I call them industry sisters. These women or this, I have two of them. What we do is... We are basically in the same line of business. However, we have our unique niches. So we are not competitors. So what we do is we buy things in bulk together for, for some of our raw materials that we ship in from the US. We buy in bulk. So that way, and you know, when you buy things in bulk, number one, it reduces the costs of um, purchase is lower because you know the higher the, the volume, the lower the price. And then we are able to also beat shipping costs from the US to Nigeria. Same thing for local um, raw materials that we buy. We go all out to the communities to source for these raw materials together. That way we can cut costs in terms of shipping costs, in terms of even our negotiation and all of those. So you want you know, to collaborate with other women within and outside of your industry. Um, another thing is to create clusters. Identify who your key people are, people that you can work with. You have to learn to leave things you know, leave, leave your individual differences and come together in creating clusters for, for results. Create synergy with other women, leverage on other women's expertise. You have someone in your community that is um, a legal practitioner for, or something. You engage them when you have to draft, you have to get into an agreement. Of course, you don't 
call them for free, but then you engage them. That way you're pushing their business and you're also pushing your own business as well. And you're ensuring that your 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 contract is tightly knitted and you're not leaving any loose ends. The other things you also want to do is to recommend women for positions. I mean, a lot of times we have opportunities to recommend some women and then we, we recommend men. It's time for women to start working the talk and doing the work. It is time for women to start so genuinely supporting each other. And lastly, holding each other's hand, you know, as you journey on the path. It's very, very, very important that we do that. That is how we can empower women. That is how we can support ourselves. That is how we can also grow together. And last time we were talking briefly on breaking the stereotypes. I mean, there are a lot of stereotypes that are involved in being a woman, being an African woman. There is a lot of things. There's cultural stereotypes. There are economic stereotypes. There are social stereotypes. That's I already placed there subconsciously, but today I'm telling you that no matter what the stereotypes is right now, you have the capacity to break loose from them. The first thing you need to do is to have mind shifts, is to have mind shifts. You realizing that, okay, you're a woman. That is not it. The second thing you want to know is you are a human being that is capable of causing change and impacting lives. Immediately you have that mind shift in your mind. The way you see things, the way you approach things, the way you do your business is going to be different. The fact that you have the, you, you are aware that you have the capacity to make an impact. As long as you have the, you, you have the awareness, you are in that conscious state that you have the capacity to make an impact, a lot of things are going to be changing. So I need you to write it in the chat in the chat book. I have the capacity to make an impact. I have the capacity to make an impact. I am a woman. I have the capacity to make an impact. Thank you, Joss. I can see that. Let me see two more people that would write that in the chat books. I am a woman. I have the capacity to make an impact. Okay, waiting for other people to write, type that in the chat books. I am a woman. I have the capacity to make an impact. Kalaba, okay, I can see you. I am a woman, I have the capacity to make an impact. Beautiful, thank you, Kalaba. I think Makodi is typing, right? I'm waiting. I am a woman. Uyo Windows, thank you. Ibadan, thank you. I love that, yes. The moment you have that mind shift, trust me, the way you do business is going to be different. You won't do business as someone buying and just selling. You would see the business as something that has the capacity to change not just your life. Oshobo, I can see you. Abuja, I can see you. Thank you very much. But to change your family, to change VI, I can see you, to change your family, to change your community, to change the nation. See the numbers, see the numbers, 23 million women in only Nigeria. Imagine how many women we have in Africa. Imagine in West Africa. Imagine what we have in Africa. Imagine what we are capable of doing. Kano, I see you. Imagine what we are capable of doing. And this is a call to every woman on this call. You need to see yourself as someone that has the capacity to make an impact. That being said, it's going to transcend even into your businesses, how you run your businesses, how you approach your businesses. You won't approach it like, okay, it's just my in my language, Yoruba, they would say you're not using it to rub your hands. You're not just using it to while away time. You are using it to make an impact. A lot of people on this call, I remember when I started my business, Madhuguri, I can see you. Thank you very much. I remember when I started my business and, you know, I started with just shape butter. And um, a lot of times um, the way I was going about it, branding it, marketing it. In fact, I even made people to be filling a form. On top of selling share butter, because I mean, I'm asking you about your details. I want to have your data, your data. You know, I want to have information about you. I want to be able to communicate with you. I want to be able to track you. Thank you very much, Bini, and everybody that is chats, putting it in the chat box. You know, and I remember somebody told me one day, he said, ah, is it not just share butter and black soup you are selling? Why must we feel a form? I said, you know what that form does? Number one, I can reach out to you when I, I'm keeping track of when your product is going to end so that you can come back and buy. That's number one. Number two, I want to be able to understand what your skin concerns are so that you have a bespoke, you feel special on your special day. You have a bespoke, you know, effect. 
and all of those things. By the time I finished saying it, everybody started seeing reason why they should be on my mailing list. So sometimes when things are happening and there are discounts, there are giveaways, people on the mailing list get the information. If for adventure today, Instagram cr um, crashes, I have, it has nothing on me because I have where I've stored people's information. So everyone, Gombe, I can see you. I am a woman. I have the capacity to make an impact. So it's very important that you know that mind shift. If, I, if that's where I'm going to stop today, I don't mind because that mind shift is going to transcend into every other thing that you do in your business, in the way you relate to people, in the way you address your staff members, in the way you produce, in the way you render your services. If you're in the service business, Jigawa, I can see you. Thank you very much. I'm a woman. I have the capacity to make an impact. So the second thing is... Um, the mind shifts being a woman already like i said you are in different circles of life marriage comes in um i mean it's fantastic by tomorrow i'll have the 10 years married okay. um and marriage is quite important because i mean pretty important to us in this part of the world however i don't think that we should see marriage as a trophy it should be um more of how you build synergy and relationship to build healthy future, healthy lifestyle, you know, change, be change agents in the society through your children and also exchange business idea and create a support system for growth of both patterns. And so this is also a call to people that put pressure on a lot of, you know, young African ladies. I understand, but at the same time, let us help build the African woman to be, to be able to help you because at the, and, in, and, and in the and a, a supportive or financially um, sustainable woman will definitely help the family. I remember I was talking to one of um, the ED of a bank recently. I was talking about how they can support the women of the Alumni Association Academy for Women Entrepreneurs. And he was really interested. He said, you see, anytime I give a woman money through the bank, that woman will always pay on time. In fact, women repay their loans faster than men but the how he knows that a woman has a troubled home is if she doesn't pay on time that means she might be the one doing a lot of things so we need women to come to the understanding and men to also support the women to realize that she's an individual she has the capacity to be a change to make an impact to change agents and also assist you know in the family you know they are that they are in the next thing is to understand your season as women Understanding your season as women. Um, we, we, we are in different seasons. And I say this because I'm also a mother. And I know that sometimes you get pregnant, you know, you're nursing, you're handling this, you're juggling a lot of things together. But understanding the season that you are in. If you are in a pregnancy season, for instance, you are, you are growing a whole human being. At that time, you might not be jumping up and down. You might just be taking courses like, Mr. Ikayo recommended a course for everyone on this call earlier. He might just be taking courses by the side. He might just be, you know, doing some things, having people that can help you run some errands, having a little bit of structures here and there. You, can, you know, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So understanding your season. So, and I tell women this because sometimes you get into that space where you are, you feel that, oh, there's this other person that is going ahead of you. Please take, take time to look at where you are. Because entrepreneurial journey is, like I said the other time, is a lonely journey. However, when you understand your season, you understand the cycles of how to relate to those seasons. So understand your season and work according to the season that you are as a woman. If you understand that season that you are in and work with that understanding or that precept, it's going to change a lot of things. So I'm going to put that into context. I remember when I was pregnant for my second child. And I told myself, I think that was around 2016, 2017. I told myself that at this point, I wasn't going to run after any business thing. I would just grow this whole human being inside of my tummy. Focus on personal development. Sit down with probably a business coach to re-strategize and just have an idea or take time to figure out what I really want to do. That was 2016, 2017. So 2017, I gave birth. 2018, I was just by myself understanding where I am going next in business, understanding my season, taking care of the baby, because I mean, we are not going to exclude that part of our lives because we are business women. And when it was towards the end of 2018, 20, early 2019, I knew that I was coming back to the business. 
at that time, I sat down with a business strategist. I drew up my five-year plan. I knew that I needed to be at some certain places. And in that 2019 was when AWE came to Nigeria. I was part of the first cohort of AWE. When I saw the adverts, I think one of my friends sent it to me and she, she told me that she feels that I, with everything I'm doing, I should be in this community. I applied and I got in. The reason I was able to get, and then I got my first business grant as well from the US, my first ever business grant from the US government. The reason I could do that was because I knew where I was coming from. I knew what I wanted, even though I was on, uh, is it, what do they call maternity leave? I was still, you know, understanding the season I was in. I was understanding the season I was in. I was maximizing it. I wasn't jumping all about. I wasn't everywhere. No, 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 no. I was just seated, seated, put, and drawing up strategy for entry into the entrepreneurial space again. And, 20, and in 2019, AWE did it for me. The next thing you want to do is to seek help. Seek for help. Be, trust me, behind every successful woman, there's a community of family, of staff members, of team, of different people that are working around the clock. So seek for help. Seek for help. Behind every successful woman, there's a community behind her. Um, recently, I've been away to the US for three weeks. I just got back on Sunday. For three weeks, we had our first international exhibition as an Academy for Women Entrepreneurs, the Alumni Association, and it was incredible. I, I asked the treasurer for the numbers two days ago to know what our women were able to generate in a two-day event in America. So we had about 16 women that, is, that went there to, for the um, exhibition in Houston. And from the report she gave me, we made a little bit above 10,000 US dollars for two days. I mean, that is incredible. However, each woman has a community that she called to, to take care of their own front. They had community that she called to, to take care of the business while they were away. So at this point in time, it's not time that you fight with everybody. Everybody, see, give our women grace, give other people capacity to come close to you and help you. If you need to outsource, another major thing you need to do is to outsource. Outsource things that you need to outsource. You, I mean, being an entrepreneur is a lot. You are the producer, marketer, social media manager, um, right. consultant, and all of those things. So you might want to also outsource a little bit. And then don't be afraid to take on policy okay. rules. Don't be afraid. Oh, thank you. I'm rounding up now. Don't be Please. afraid, you know, to take up positions when needs be because you have to be in the room where policy are made. You have to be in the room where decisions are made. If for adventure you anyone comes to you and they, they tell you that, oh, or you're in any network and they need people in leadership, please, as a woman, it's mandatory that we start taking up spaces so that we can speak as entrepreneurs and people that are on the field. And lastly, get to dream. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's put that together for her. Um, she has said so many things and uh, said the entrepreneurship journey is a lonely journey. That's why you need a community. She also said that you understand your season. She emphasized so much on mind shift. And um, she said so many things that we're going to ask questions. So I hope you are getting set with your questions. So Ajaratu, over to you now. OK. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for her, too. And it's really hard to say something else impactful after all. I think she has said it all, but I'm going to try. Uh, in, I'm going to speak about gender equality in entrepreneurship in an African perspective, because after research, I've realized that we might have similar challenges globally in order to close the gap of gender inequality. But the fact of the matter is we have different realities. Indeed, according to African Development Bank, nearly 26% of women are in the process of starting or managing a business in sub-Saharan Africa, making Africa the continent with the highest percentage of women entrepreneurs in the world. I think the six uh, well, 23 million women doing entrepreneurship. That's 
statistic make Africa the continent with the highest percentage of women entrepreneurs in the world. However, it must be emphasized that in our continent, we might have numerous women entrepreneurs, but unfortunately, we don't have quality entrepreneurs. Small business, and then this business unfortunately remains small. And the business will stay small. It will really grow to, grow to become a sustainable and successful to have significant social impact. Comparing to men, men are having more opportunities to grow. They have more easier access to market and more opportunities for networking and joint venture. In general, they are more successful with more impactful opportunities. In Africa, in general, men have more access to quality education, by the way. And they stay longer study in finances and industrial fields. When we come to specific case of Niger, for example, women in Niger face a set of challenges, cultural and social norm combined with traditional gender role may restrict women mobility and participation in economic activities, making it difficult for them to engage in entrepreneurship. I think my sister also talked about it. Women face challenges in accessing capital and loans to start or expand their businesses, which limit their opportunities for growth. In Niger, there are few women role models. And there are few opportunities to access loans, knowledge, how, know how, mentorship or leadership training, and real empowerment. Despite all the difficulties we face as women entrepreneurs, solution exists, which if put in place can really help close the gap and have significant impact for the social economic development of a country such as Niger. According to World Bank, reducing gender inequality would increase per capita GDP by more than a fourth in, by 2030. Among the solutions are creating more role models. I really want to emphasize on that about role models because they can help in many ways, these role models, including mentoring, inspiring, expanding networks, boosting confidence, and providing resources. They should be having also putting in place access to quality and education, making, easy, making it easier for women to access funding uh, and also financial resources. The government should create an enabling environment for women's businesses In, in our country, paying taxes, sometimes it is even higher than what we have as the capital. So it's hard for us start starting to pay the, the, the income taxes. So if women were to have like more time, I think it will really help. And also men in our society, because they are the one who takes most of the decision at country and household level, they should be more educated in encouraging and empowering women in the entrepreneurship field. We should have them understand the benefit, such as the fact that women can significantly improve the quality of life in the family and in the society if given the opportunity to contribute adequately. Gender equity can boost economic growth by expanding the pool of entrepreneurs and business, thus creating wealth and well being for all. Indeed, a more inclusive and diverse entrepreneurial ecosystem benefits everyone and addresses social imbalance. Effort to promote gender equity, equity aim to break down the economic and social barriers, creating an inclusive and supportive environment for all. 
ultimately leading to a more equitable and prosperous nation. This involves a combination of policy changes, cultural shift, and increased opportunities for women entrepreneurs. Thank you all. So uh, I've, okay. I've finished. Okay, uh, let's put our hands together for her. Okay. I really want to, to also really say that we really need to emphasize about uh, the role models. Women really need more successful, especially in Africa. We really need more women who are successful, not only doing small businesses, like I said, and staying small. We really need more women who are like in who have industries really uh, more women who have impactful businesses because these role models are really going to impact the other young generation uh, the other young generation and they are going to change things so i really want to emphasize on that and also i had a trip uh, to america uh, last year i was an ivlp and they discover the co-working spaces. And they really think that if we have such spaces in our countries, it can really help, especially if such spaces are owned by women entrepreneurs. Because I noticed that in, the, in those places, you can start something, have uh, mentoring with other entrepreneurs, and also you can even start your business there and then have a uh, like the tools so that when you leave the, 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 the space, you can really grow your business on your own. But everyone knows that starting a business is not easy. But if we had such spaces, especially in our countries, it, and if they are owned by women, it will really help them. Uh, having like role models, having a to know how to go about things. And when they are on their own, they can really do things impactful. So I really want to emphasize on like, really we have to put a lot of effort in making women businesses grow so that they can be sustainable, impactful, and also they can be role models. So giving them also adequate education, quality education, helping them stay more at schools, it's very important. It's especially in fields like industries, uh, also finance, finance courses, it's very important because most of the time, especially in our countries, it's all about education. We, we, we leave school early, we get married, have kids. So it's really hard when we get married to, and you know how our, our society work. You, you have your business to take care of and you also have the household to take care of. So I also want to emphasize on that. We really need role models, successful African women so that we can impact the young generation and show them the way to be such successful. It, I, I was really shocked by the way when I was doing the, the research for the presentation today, to learn that women in Africa, we have more women in Africa than anywhere in the world doing entrepreneurship. But I was really sad to know that these businesses, they are not impactful. They start small and then they stay small. And it's really, really sad. So I really want uh, people to, because sometimes it's not all, only about finance, I, I, only about getting grants, about get, getting money. It's also about having a vision, having objective, knowing what I want to do from this year to five years, where do I want to see, where do I see myself in? So all that we need to like, put it in the, in the mind of the young girls. It's not only about getting married and then like the, my sister said, it should not be a trophy, but 
unfortunately also when you get married, maybe sometimes, most of the time, especially in our society, it might put you down. You want to grow, you want to excel in what you are doing, but it's not right. easy. So men also need to be educated, like I said. Men Thank need to educate much. to yeah, to be educated about it, letting uh, their wives, their sisters, their daughters, encouraging them in that field of entrepreneurship. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Thank you. <laughs> so, Ajaratu, we appreciate your comments and um, emphasizing the last point, particularly your mm -hmm. discovery, your research, and that's why research is very important. We discover <laughs> that, look, we have the largest number of entrepreneurs as women, yeah. but um, they're just not growing. They're not impactful at all. Mm -hmm. They at have all, mega, well. mega businesses. And mm -hmm. the question mm -hmm. is, why is this so? And what yeah. can we do? And mm -hmm. you have actually uh, attacked the question. So now we are going to have a round of questions and answers. So from all our stations and also those of us on our Facebook page, I can see here from Sierra Leone, uh, American Corner Bo is Sierra Leone. They joined us also on the Facebook page. John Freeze is there, is making a lot of comments. Francis is there. Uh, Sarah is there. Abdul is there. And we have quite a number of people uh, who are making comments. So uh, because we are streaming live on our Facebook pages, US Mission in Nigeria, and the rest. Now, the first question is this, and it's coming from Festus. He said, thank and appreciate to all the speakers. My question is, what are entrepreneurs' motivation to launch their business capacity, especially women? I'm watching live in Kanama, American <coughs> Shell, Sierra Leone. So any of you can take this up. Uh, we have about 13 people watching live. Uh, please, any of you can take up this question. And anyone in all our spaces, if you want to make any question, raise your virtual hand, and then we'll give you the opportunity to ask your question. Over to you, our speakers. Um, who is going to start can first? You? Can I have the question repeated, please? Okay. What are entrepreneurs' motivation to launch their businesses, especially women in Africa? What motivates mm -hmm. women to launch mm -hmm. their businesses in Africa? Okay. okay. And then another person also say, what are the challenges that female mm -hmm. entrepreneurs face and how do we solve them? So if you could attend okay. to all the, this... Um, if you want to start that, then um, Adelaide can come later. Now let's okay. make sure we just do like one minute, two minutes, so that we can mm -hmm. finish okay. on time. Okay. So he was asking uh, what motivates uh, women to go on an entrepreneurship I, in Africa. I think mostly women are motivated by also social economic uh, situations and most of the times like in uh, we, we, we as women especially in Africa we are put in situation where maybe after a divorce maybe most of the time or maybe at the death of the husband or the father we are the ones who are taking care of the whole family most of the time and uh, even if the we have a man uh, beside us most of the time if we have children we are the ones who are going to take care of them so there is no system in where I, I don't think so maybe in other countries Af African other countries there is but there is no real system in, in where when, uh, when you have a child with a man maybe if you are not married or something like that you have to uh, force the man to pay maybe child support uh, or something like that. I'm just talking, by the way, about uh, my 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 on my perspective. So I think most of the time is women are motivated on taking care of their families, taking care of their kids, uh, 
it's it's mostly like emotional drive that mostly not all the time but i think it's mostly it's because we everyone knows how we are natural emo, we are naturally emotional so i think most of the time we are drive by uh, the fact that we want to help our family that is why even when women enter in that entrepreneurship field it's for just to improve the the life of the family and the society yeah so i think uh, mostly that's what uh, drives us mostly thank you very much okay uh, can we have um adbc yeah thank you very adbc are you there we can't hear you. I can't hear you. Go ahead, please. Good. Thank you. So I said a lot of times, um, women start first with... We have to move for us um, from emotion to impact, for us to scale, like we discussed in today's conversation. So for us to scale and not remain small businesses, you have to move from emotions to one preferring solutions and create an impact. Nobody can scale a business on just emotions. If you have your emotions everywhere, then you would not grow. But immediately you are able to see yourself as someone that can be a change agent. That is going to change in the way you see your business. That's going to change in the way you operate your business. And then you have the capacity to expand. So even though you start with emotions, now you have to go back to the brain board. What solutions am I providing through my businesses and my services? Number two, how can I impact my community with my business? That is where scalability comes up. Can you do something with the audio, please? We are not hearing you well. Okay. Um, just give me a moment. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh is it yes, I uh, can hear you, but it seems you are far from the speaker. Oh, okay. You were very loud before, but uh, the thing just went down moments ago. Okay. Um... So if you could move if what you, you move did very what? well before now. <laughs> Hello, is it better yes, now? Much okay. better. In fact, this is okay. what we want. Thank you very much. I said for scalability for businesses, move from emotions to preferring solutions and to being identifying yourself as a change agent. That is how you can scale your businesses, even though that is your motivation over the remaining years of your business. The second question that was um Ask, uh, what are the challenges faced by female entrepreneurs? I mean, we've spoken about that um, recently. Um, those were some of the stereotypes I spoke about. Um, challenges of not having support, not having a clear understanding of what you want your business to be and how you want it to grow. Another major challenge is finance. We cannot remove finance from the growth of business. Finance is key, is important for scalability. But before you even go to finance, then you need to have a clear understanding of what you want to achieve with your business. Another key thing that I think people should realize, and this is also, I hope that there are policymakers and programs um, implementers and um, program designers. We also need to come to the point, this is a call, this is a direct conversation with them. You have to come to the point where you realize that equity and equality is not the same thing, even in the female entrepreneurial space. So equality for women entrepreneur is... All the women having access to this Nigeria, where a lot of women are always different as electoral programs. I mean, four or five programs at the same time. And at the end of the day, there is no what next after the program. So I think programs coordinators and pro, pro, program designers and implementers should, be, should come up with equity plans. Equity plans in, in terms of look at. People that you want to um, bring up um, 
into your accelerator program? Do they really need this training? How many of such training have they attended before? What is the next thing for them? Okay, after the training, should we have like a strategy session with them so that they become clearer on what they want to achieve, their next goals? I think that is key. Aside from that, okay, we've done the strategy section with them. They know the next goals. What are really the next steps? They have a clearer perspective of what their business should be doing. What are the next steps? Oh, they need finance. They need certifications. Can we speak to certification organizations in a place like Nigeria? You're thinking of like a NAVDA, you know, you're thinking of like an NEPC. In a place like other countries that wants to export to the US, you're looking at FDA and all of those other certifications. So it might not actually be finance, but I think organizations and programs um, designers should go beyond just providing accelerator programs for people, for women entrepreneurs especially, because a lot of them have attended so much. But providing solutions that are tailor-made for each class of people. So for instance, group them into years, first to five years, we expect that I should have this level of turnover. We expect that I should be at this point of your business. This is the next thing you need for the next five years. And then you provide programs for them in that aspect. So that way, that solutions um, and challenges that each business or women businesses face is kind of reduced. The other thing is the supports. A lot of women don't have support system, solid communities that they can always fall back on. And we have spoken about it earlier. Please let us support women entrepreneurs. You know, my people would say that if you see me outside, please just give me a hug, you know, and just encourage me. Encourage them, support them, render services for them. You know, if you see opportunities that is going to benefit them, recommend it for them. And most importantly, and lastly, women entrepreneurs um, dare to dream. Basically, that is it. Dare to dream. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we go to Shugo now, and then we take um, uh, Ibnada University. That's the Ibnisiti uh, window in America. The two of them together. So please unmute yourself, Shugo, and uh, Ibnisiti after. Uh, before we go to um the rest kushubo are you there if kushubo is not ready let's go to um Benin city good afternoon sir it's already afternoon yes yes some of our participants have questions to ask but one of our students will just help to read them out Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the very engaging session. You can talk. Go ahead. Please, what is the future for women, especially in Africa, when marriage is a major challenge? Please. Yes, we can. Okay. Please, what is the future for women, especially in Africa, when marriage is a major challenge in advancing their career? Men are always dominant and jealous, especially if the women are growing fast in their chosen venture. Should she go to the next question? One more question. Okay, one more question. Okay. Are there more, are there more workable solutions to bridge the gap between gender equality in women entrepreneurs? All right, thank you very much. Yes, um, Adelaya, let's start with you this time around. Adebisi, Adelaya, this is. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, the first question, um, you said, what is the future for women? I mean, the future That's for right. women is women owning their power. That is the future. The future for women is women seeing themselves as change agents and having the capacity to grow a Fortune 500 company. The future for women is taking their life um, more seriously, living deliberately, and not being afraid to take daring steps in terms of their businesses. The future for women is women coming into business prepared, not just on emotions, but, you know, ready to take the bull by the own. The future for women is women looking out for opportunities and not waiting for it to be dropped on their laps, but looking out for opportunities and going after it and being the best at whatever craft that they are learning. 
the future for women is you know em embracing collaboration and not seeing the next woman as a competition thank you very much Can you hear me? Yes. Do you have anything to add? We had you. Do you okay. have anything to add? Yo, that is all from my end. Ajaratu, mm -hmm. over to you. you have anything yes, to she add? was. She, no, I have nothing to add. I think what she said was right. But she asked a second question about okay, uh, men. Yeah. Yes, about women. She said, yes. uh, yeah. The fact, as I said in my, I think men in our society, because they're the one who takes the most decisions, uh, they should be, I think, more in the educated about uh, the importance of uh, encouraging and letting their sisters, their, their daughters, their wives, and do not be afraid of being with a woman who is powerful, who is successful, they have to see her like a complementary partnership, not as a competition. Your wife, I think, should not be your competitor. But unfortunately, yes, we, have, we face, especially in our societies, we, we face those problems. But I think slowly, slowly, men are going to change because uh, if we 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 take uh, like we have more uh, like conferences that which can educate them, and they see nowadays we have platforms, we have uh, even on social medias. I think women should talk more about the advantages for a man to have by his side a successful woman. Uh, the influencers, the, the, the international uh, speakers should talk more about it, I think. And maybe it's going to impact and it's going to help uh, uh, men you. understand the, the benefit of, of women being the success, successful and in the field of entrepreneurship. Thank you very much. Men okay. should learn to support their women Men yeah. should learn <laughs> to understand that their women mm -hmm. are also human and they need mm -hmm. fulfillment as well. They should not see other their women, their wives as competitors. What I always tell people is, if my wife is the most successful in whatever she does, my name is always going to be called because she's Mrs. Me. There's no way they will call her Mrs. It's That's my so name right. they will call. So why should I be competing with my wife? So I would rather work to make sure that my wife is successful. And that's a message to you all men. So thank you very much. We go to uh, American Shell in Canada. I have another question. No, 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 just wait. You've had your time. Just wait. We, are go we have so many people and we just have 30 more minutes. So American Corner Shell in Canada in Sri alone. And then we go to Jigawa Duse. Over to you and Kenema. Yeah, good morning to everyone. Good morning. Uh, my question here is uh, Is the gender in entrepreneurship a gap for closing the, the, the business? What? Okay, is, can you say that again? Is gender in entrepreneurship a gap? Close. Mm -hmm. okay. um, it's the gap that is available within the gender. Is it a problem? Uh, our speaker will attend to that. Yes, let's go to Duse Jigawa. Duse Jigawa, over to you. Good morning. My name Good morning. is from um, My question is most of these empowerment centers are trained women. 
are far from us. How can we access those training centers so that we cannot, so that we can also be trained with those skills for business? Um, we we want so the American training centers. The training centers are far from them. Women, so how do they? Which other alternative do they have? Yes. yes. Second question. Um, we want American space to improve us with skills training. Our I can answer that one. I can answer that one. Our most challenge is assessing internet. <laughs> but okay. if this is a physical for our reach, we can join and have our training physically. Then we Northerners are left behind in such awareness of empowering and also uh, of a woman empowering and also youth on entrepreneurship. Thank you. All right, before you go, um, let me just understand the issue of skill development from American spaces. Are you saying that this location where you are is far from where you live? No, the empowering um, centers are far from here. Okay, I understand that one. So what, what do you want from American space? That's the one I'm talking about now. We want American space to improve the empowering, empowering centers. Okay, so what yeah. we can do, you know, American spaces are U.S. government partnered spaces. So we partner with your federal university. That's why we have the one you have right now. The programs we are beaming to your place is part of what U.S. government is doing to empower you as a Nigerian. Okay. So that's why we said you should register for the next one that is coming up from November 17. Let the whole university know about it. Let the whole university come in there. Every woman on the street, every man on the street that needs to know, let them come in. It's free and they're going to get certificates for it. Okay, so Ajaratu, you understand the question. Uh, the first question from here is that, look, the empowering uh, centers are far from them. What do they need to do? Thank you very much. So let's wait for oh, the answer. Okay, I, I, I was going to, to answer about the, uh, the importance of closing the gap, but I, I think if the centers are far for, from them, and uh, also the hello, we can't hear you again, Ajaratu. Hello. Hello, Ajaratu. Yes, I can hear you very well. By the way, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. We are not hearing you. Before. Okay, okay, okay. So I was saying that if the they need more like empowering centers, this is it what I understood. And because uh, they are far from, Amer like American corner centers. No. Is it what she homes. was saying? No. From, from their, their homes. homes. Yes, the the mm -hmm. empowering centers for women are far. So what do they need to okay. do? Okay. Wow, I think uh, they can maybe put their strength together and uh, uh, see how they can, like, can I say hire a car or something like that to be going there every time? Because, or maybe, or see the government, they can put also their strength together and go and see the government, place the issue, and then the government will see how he can how it can open more like empowering centers training centers for women i think normally it's the government uh, uh, job to open such places for women like i think she's talking is he talking about like vocational training centers yes okay yeah i think that one she should, they should go and uh, address the issue to the government. All right, thank you very much. 
And ABC, what do you say? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, like I said the other time, um, if you feel that the training center is too far from you, how not? How about bringing the training center close to you? If you have majority of those of you that are um, transporting to the training center and it's really far, how about you set up a place close to somebody's um, house? You can use someone's house for training center. I, I think that we shouldn't, um, I'm sorry, but I mean, we shouldn't wait to be spoon fed at all times. I feel that you can also write to American Center that, okay, can we have this, our training center at these days, look at their calendar, can we have it since American Center is close to you? I think it's a conversation that you can have. Aside from that, there are different trainings. There are different, I listed about eight trainings at the beginning of the of my conversation today, and most of all those trainings are online. So if American Center is close to you, all of you can come together and join a certain training at that point. If that is not working, then if you all stay close by, use somebody's house for your training. It depends on what you want to learn as well. But if it is not something that demands that you go all the way, see, we need to get to that point where we don't look for excuses, whatever the excuses are, yeah. look at it from the right front and center and see how you can profile solution. Sometimes yeah. opportunities will not come on our lap. We have to grab it. And then um, yeah. I just wanted to add to the former question um, the other time, the person that spoke on um, the issue of men supporting, you know, I know that cult there are cultural differences in some places. There are some places where you don't have a choice um, because of the culture on the approval of which man or the or the sole decision of the man you're going to marry. I know that in some cultural places, you don't have that choice. But if you're in some part of Nigeria, like the southern and western part and eastern part, you still have the ability to like accept a proposal as an individual and not as, um, you know, you know, family deciding for you on that. If that is the case, then women have to be very deliberate. Check all the lists. This person, does it look like someone that would support you? The things you're doing right now, is it supporting you? I tell people that love is not blind. Enter into your marriage with your eyes wide open. Enter into your relationship with your eye wide open. If you see some red flags and you feel that it's not going to, is this person not going to encourage you to be all of these things that you want to be, you might also want to look deep into it in when you're making your decisions to settle down with as a life partner. Thank you. Uh, now, I really have time constraints and I have so many hands up and I can see many centers or spaces we like to ask many, multiple questions. So what I will encourage is this for our speakers, please, you need to take a pen and paper and jot these questions. And then once one of you have handled uh, a question, then the other person will not. So that we quickly just have to take some of these things and wrap it. So we go very quickly to Kano, Calabar, Mina, Oshogo, Oka, and American Center. We pick all those questions very quickly. And so please, Let's limit our questions to one question. Just pick one serious question. Over to you, Kano. My journey of entrepreneurship, I encountered a lot of inequalities due to the cultural and uh, environmental factors. People try to demotivate me because I am a human. I have very expensive dreams. I know what I want, but the problem is how to get it because the environment and the culture is not supported. There was a time I wanted venturing into contract supplies and project management. People keep telling me that as a woman, I don't have to do that because it is a men's sector. So my question is, please, what is the way forward and how, how can I go about it? Thank, Thank you, you very much. So how can she go about it? So please sit down while we take another question from Mina. Mina, meet yourself. Oh, Calabar first. 
Then Mina. You can't catch it. I can't stand you. So I have a question. I wrote down. How can policies and regulations be adapted to create a more inclusive environment for women in entrepreneurship? Sorry, we can't hear that question very well. Move closer to the. No, no, you are moving away from the left. Move to your left. Aha, uh -huh, yes. So in short, how can policy and regulations help to improve the inclusion of women and other people. Thank you very much. So we we'll go to Mina right away. Mina. Good afternoon. Please move close to the laptop. Mina, we can't hear you. Okay, you need to occur next. You can hear me now. Okay. All right. I'm just going to miss. I think I'm not going to miss. I'm not going to miss. This is Adelaide. Okay, she said Sorry. something concerning the valuable NGO that can give us fund. So please, I would like her to give us some of the name of the NGO. Okay, available NGOs that can give funds. They need contact information for such. Okay, Oka, over to you. Oka. Oka. Okay, Oshogo now. Right, right. Um, my question is that okay, please hold on. We should go now. My question is that is there any way that women can be given grants or talk to no without interest to start their business? Is there any because way where you can get grants so that you will not pay for women? Free money in short. <laughs> For example, no, I think is it free money? That's what I'm saying. That's what that is what is called free money. Free money because some of them don't have, they are just managing. That's okay. Okay, over okay, over to you. Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much. Our uh, speaker, Mrs. Um, Adebisi Odili, said that you can't start a business because of uh, emotion only. So, and um, I want to start my, so because of what I see my parents doing, then, uh, so it's not start motivating me. You know, I want to you know like things. No, easy. So I don't know what are the challenges in the field there. So that uh, once I step into there, you know, I think I'll find it that easy for me to, you know, run. So Thank this you young much. man would like to know the easy way of starting business and making money. <laughs> All right. So American Center, unmute yourself. Good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so quick one. Um, it has always been like, uh, you know, when you say entrepreneurship, it has always been like, uh, you have to start small from somewhere. So, um, and according to Mrs. Ajara, she said something about, uh, we have a larger number of um, population of female entrepreneurship in the whole Africa, in fact, in the world at large. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, the, the, most of those entrepreneurs actually started, they start small, and they still remain small. Now, my question is, mm -hmm. 
if, if that's how it should be, you know, what are those challenges? What are those things that needs to help them grow from where they are? Because it's all about impacting. It's not about just that small. I want to make small gains and be able to feed myself. No, it's about you impacting others and grow in that same business. You know, create a pathway for success in that same line. So the question is, why are we still? Why are they still? Why do we still have a large number of people remaining small, even when they have started in a very long time? That is one. Then secondly, we said you said something about women empowering women. You know, we said something again about uh, men empowering women. Then who is going to empower men? Thank you very much. So don't leave men <laughs> out, though. That's what he said in essence. Oshobo, we've dealt with Oshobo. Now let's go back to that's the final one. Um, I saw this person sitting down for a long time. I think it's in um, Duse. Do say you had somebody who sat down there for a long time. Is 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 do say okay now? Oh yeah, quickly. Come, 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 come. Okay. Because today is your day. <laughs> mm. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon. What are the scenarios? that we can follow to ensure the progress of human entrepreneurship. What are the scenarios? That we can follow to ensure the, the progress of human entrepreneurship. OK, uh, he's asking for scenarios where women can follow in order to be successful. So uh Adelaide, Mrs. will start. Odelaya, I would say Odelaya, Odelaya, ADBC, Odelaya. We we'll start and then we'll have Ajara too, and then we'll wrap up. Over to you, our speakers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Is it is it me? Who is... No, I, I want... It's now a DBC's turn, then your turn. Okay. Um, thank you for all your questions. I was able to scribble a few things down. Um. Um, so somebody said um, available NGOs that can give funds. I think um, you would have to research that yourself. Um, like I said, don't wait for everything to drop on your lap. Um, no fool. There is no fool grants, notice of funding that comes from the U.S. government. How many of you have um, engaged with that? I'm sure that by early next year or just always look out at all the American spaces. Also go to the website of the U.S. in Nigeria. You would see see loads and loads of opportunity but i also need to put it out there that grants is not free money it is money to execute a project it's a money that you are accountable for so whatever grant you get it's very important that you judiciously utilize it because later on in future something is going to happen that you'll be called to give an account for it and if you don't have the uh, ability to give an account for it then you might not have access to it again um so you might also want to look at um, usadf they do things with um across board whether women or men for the person that said that who's talking to man i mean society already has given men advantage we are just trying to women are just trying to meet up to you know to find a place in it in a society where men is always giving advantage. So please, as much as possible, we are not sublining. We are just, you know, reiterating what is obtainable in the society right now. So USADF is a good place. NOFO is a good place. Um, that's um US notice of funding that is always periodically shared. Google is a good place. Trust me. Opportunities for Africa. Is it opportunities for Africa, opportunities of Africa? Is this opportunities for Africa? Google opportunities for Africa, and you would see loads, loads, loads of opportunities. So you might also want to leverage on that platform. I talked about Tony Lumelu as well. It's a good place. It's um, not gender biased. Um, so you might want to, I have, think I've mentioned to sell about four or five of it. Um, another question is how to thrive in a male-dominated um, sector. Um, number one, I think you need to learn the craft of the sector. I always tell people that be so good in whatever craft or whatever industry you are that you become undeniable. So be so good in that craft and then um, learn the ropes. If you need to intern, intern. 
learn the ropes well so that by the time you are coming in, nobody can push you aside. If they want to push you aside for any other thing, it's not going to be because of the quality of your work. It will be known that you're an excellent person. So you want to know your craft and, you know, putting your foot at the best. And please don't let anybody talk you out of whatever thing you're doing, especially when you know what you're doing. Do not let anybody talk you out. Don't let anybody make you feel like you are a second citizen do not put yourself in that situation. You're not going to be aggressive about it in any way. Respectfully, do your work excellently and let your results speak for you. And when you're doing it, don't do it in the dark. Do it in the open when everybody will know that, no, this person is excellent and she cannot, you know, be pushed aside. Um, another question I saw that I felt was directed to me was the person that said, easy way, you know, of making money. Emotions, yeah, I mentioned emotions can start a business, but emotions cannot sustain a business to live a small and medium scale. You have to push your emotions aside. You have to have a lot of discipline. For you to have easy money to make your business, you have to put your business aside. You have to work hard. It's important. Um, nothing easy comes without out hard work, but a lot of hard work is not like, um, when I mean hard work, I mean a lot of strategy section and having clarity on what you're doing. It also means that you marketing, you know, your business, it also means that you understanding SWOT. I don't know if you know the meaning of SWOT. SWOT is your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. How it affects your business. That way you position your business well and leverage on your strengths. For your weakness, you outsource it and get someone that can fill in that space. That way you're able to you know, spread your, spread your risk and you're able to accumulate time and you know, increase your returns. I think that is um, some of the questions I was able to jot down. The last person that talked about scenario for women, I did not from Ducey. Ducey, I don't really understand what you said, but those are where the questions that I scribbled down. Thank you very much. Hi, Joe. Thank you. Over to you. Hi, Jaratu. Yes, I can hear you very well. So the questions I took, I'm going to start with the one who was saying about what I said uh, about my research where uh, we have the largest amount of women entrepreneurs in the world. By the way, I was also surprised to see that in my research, but it's the truth, it's the truth unfortunately. And we stay small. We stay small, why? Because we don't get access to enough funding. We don't get access to like loans, credits, and even sometimes just having collaborators. Most of the time, especially in our environment, in our societies, women, a man will prefer to like, give out money to another man so that he, his business would, prefer, would prosper. So I think uh, that is one. And also we don't have enough vision. We don't have enough vision because we don't have enough women we can look up to. We don't have these uh, women who, who we can take as role models. So we start small businesses, but we don't have this vision of saying that by five years, I want to be having like an industry instead of maybe doing, I, I, I'm taking just an example, maybe someone who is doing like juice, I'm doing it with the hands and everything is, doing, is done informally. But we don't have, we, that is why I was so much emphasizing about uh, on the role models. We need women who are successful in entrepreneurship, more of them, so that more women can look up to them, so that all those role models also can be mentoring the others, can be great leaders to the others, and then we can be having, uh, instead of the women doing small businesses and keeping them small, they can be doing the more in fact impactful businesses and making them sustainable so this is about uh, he was telling he was asking also uh i think for our businesses to grow it's also they don't want us to talk about it so most of the time they said an entrepreneur an entrepreneur should 
uh, like focus on himself and uh, not go and count on the government and so on. You can start small, yes. But if you want to grow, either you like it or not, the government and have to like put institutions who are going to and also make enabling environment which will be helping women entrepreneurs their businesses to grow so either we like it or not we have to address those issues about paying taxes about uh, so many things so Either we uh, and also access to funding, by the way, access to a uh, bank's loan. All those should be, I don't know about in other countries, but in my country, it is so hard for a bank to give out a loan to a woman because the bank will ask for a uh, guarantee, will ask for maybe a uh, down, do I say down payment? I don't know. But most of the time, you will have to bring out maybe papers of your property or so on. And most of the time, women don't have properties. Women don't have access to land so that they can go and give out to, to the bank so that they can get loans. So all these issues need to be addressed. And uh, it's just among all the other things that we, 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 we can we can put in place to really help women. Also helping, uh, I was saying also help, uh, talking to men about the importance of letting women grow because when you start a business small, everything is fine. When you start to grow, you start earning more money than your husband, then this problem starts. And for us women, we are so vulnerable because when you are in a marriage, for instance, and divorce happen, unfortunately, in most of the, the cases, you are the one who is going to take care of the charges for the children most of the time, because we don't have like institutions and uh, our laws are not really so strongly protecting the women. So that is what I wanted to say about that. And also someone talked about uh, how to start a business and get easy money or I don't know, I did, maybe I didn't understand. What I want to say that there is no easy money. I don't know, even if, name it, whatever it is, if you have to get money for it, you have to pay a price whatever it is. So there is no easy, easy money. And I think to be successful as an entrepreneur, you have to have a great vision. You have to know exactly what you want from your vision. You have to have objective, you have to be disciplined. And most of it all, you have to be patient. I think patience is, especially for women, you have to be patient because Maybe uh, sometimes you, for a start, people are going to like look down on you when you start something. And when you are going to say your goals, you want to go and be, and be doing this, this and that, maybe people are going to put you down, but you have to stay focused, know what you want, have your vision, know in five years time, where do I want to be? And do, how do I start from now using what I have now so that I can reach to where I want to be in the next maybe five years, in the next three years. And that is what we are so much lacking, having a vision. And also I'm going to talk about being passionate about what you are doing. You have to love what you are doing as an entrepreneur because for a start, you might not be having what you expected when you enter in the entrepreneurship world. It's only your, your, uh, your passion that is going to drive you to, to, to success. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I think we need to um, just straighten that aspect of free money. 
It's talking about grants given to women in entrepreneurship, and I'm aware of that. Um, I would like uh, DBC Odelaya to please address that. And somebody's also asking about AWE. Uh, how do you get involved? And then do you also receive grants that are not payable back? So those are issues. So it's not like free money as in free money, but grants given by US government or other agencies or other NGOs or whatever that do not need you to pay back. ADBC, please address that. Okay, thank you very much for that question. Um, luckily for me, or blessed of me, favored of me, I've been able to receive grants you know, from different organizations. And I tell you that um, getting grants, there are some people that they call grants premium. If you start your business on grants, it might be hard for you to sustain it. And I'm saying this as um, I did not start my business on grants. I started my business with 500 Naira. 500 Naira is about half of a dollar. If you change that money, that's half of a dollar. That's US dollars. I started my business half of a dollar. I've gotten, I've passed 1 million Naira mark before I got a grant. But if, so I'm going to use an example of what is happening right now in the tech space. A lot of tech organizations start up and then you hear that they are raising funds. After some time, you hear that those businesses are crashing. You don't want a business that will start and crash. So number one, before you even apply to get a grant, have a model. If you're in the product sector, you know the right proportion. Has, have an SOP. Know what you need to produce a certain amount of things. So by the time the money comes, it doesn't choke you. And then you get lost in the process of it. I need to put all this out there before we talk about the grants. So for me, I started my business with 500 Naira. I grew it. I think when I got 100,000, I made a major business mistake. I printed labels and all the money that I made went down the drain. So I sat down and I built a structure on how to, you know, go forward in making decisions for the organization. That is not even grant money. So I've missed, I've lost money by myself. So by the time grant money came in, I was applying myself. I was extremely detailed. I was disciplined in how I was managing funds. So I needed to put this out there before you start thinking of looking for grants all around. How much have you been able to manage? How much have you built over the years? And one of the ways you build or you get grants is when organizations also see your track record. They see what you've done in the past and what you're capable of doing with the little that you have. I mean, if you are, if you just come to me, for instance, if I'm on, a, an, I'm on a board that I'm approving grants, if you've not made money by yourself before, I'm not going to personally give you grants because I believe that you'll not be able to manage the money I give to you. And I've been on boards like that before and I've done that. So I need to put it out there. So starting a business, start with what you have. Start with what you have first. Gather family and friends together. Get what they have. Let them see results. Build your storytelling. Build your success. So by the time grants come, it is an icing on the cake on what you already have on ground. That being said, I mean, there are a lot of grant opportunities, but they have criteria. So some organizations will look at your track record. Some of them will look at if you're a social entrepreneur, if you're giving, um, if you're giving back to the community. Some of them don't even care about what you've given to the community. They just want to see your traction and your business growth. There are organizations like that. So you need to understand what the organization that is giving grants, what they really want, and then the objective for the giving of the grants. You need to understand that before you apply for any grant. And then you, you should be able to also give reports on how you spend the grants. The money I got from the US government, I mean, that was in 2019. I'd already passed my mark of maybe about three million thereabouts before that money came in. I knew what I wanted to use the money for. I knew that I wanted to get NAVDAC. I knew I wanted to penetrate into supermarkets in different places in Lagos State. So by the time the money came, bam, the next thing I ran to was NAVDAC. NAVDAC is the regulatory body for food and um, drugs in Nigeria and cosmetics. So I quickly went there to go and register my NAVDAC. That grant helped me to enter into, it got, it's just for certification I used the grant for majorly. That helped me get my foot into where I have always longed to get to. So I wasn't trying my formula, my recipe to see if it's working or it's not working. It was already working. I just needed to get my foot into a new territory. So that being said, opportunities 
like I mentioned, opportunities for Africa is a good place. Um, AWE is a good place as well. AWE has a partnership with USADF. At the end of um, each of the cohorts, five people are going to be selected. I know that's what happens in Nigeria. I don't know for other countries. Five people are going to be selected, and then you can have access to about 5,000 US dollars. So the question now is, um, how do you get into AWE? AWE happens in different countries. I know I've met people from AWE in um, Kenya, and I'm also aware that there is, I think, AWE in Ghana. So you might also want to research Google if AWE is in your country, and then you apply. AWE is Academy for Women Entrepreneurs, and um, it's in different countries. So you might want to um, Google if it is available in your country, and then you apply for the for it. Like normally, you talk about your business, you talk about your traction, traction in terms of your revenue and what you've been able to achieve, what your business does. You know, it's just understanding the concepts of how your business runs. You're able to tell your brand story in a convincing way. So that is how you join AWE. And after you, if you're lucky or favored to be selected, you know, you get into the program, you do your best, and then you apply whatever you've, you know, you've done in the in the program. But beyond AWE, there are also other different, I'm sure there will be local, um, localized platforms where you can learn things about entrepreneurship. Like I said, make sure you get into those programs, whether they get the grants or you don't get the grants, get into that community. Because by the time information for grants is circulating, it is going to be from those communities that you would hear. You might not hear it on the streets of Instagram or on the streets of WhatsApp, but in those communities that you've joined. So you might want to also join those communities. So yes, I've mentioned um, some of the grants, the AWE, um, the USAIDF, the NOFU grants, um, the Tony Numelu that happens between 1st and um, of January to the last month of March for each new year, first quarter of each new year. Tony Numelu is always out. So just look at it, look at the age, look at what the organization wants and see if it's it um, clicks with or it's aligned with what you're doing presently in your organization. I hope I answered your questions well. Yes, I think so. You did. Okay. did justice to it. Thank Let's you put much. our hands together for our speakers today. But I would not want to end without looking at our Facebook page. We still have people who are consistently, we have 13 when we started we still have 13 still, you know, watching from respective places. Um, for those who are watching by Facebook, can you tell us your location quickly so that we can acknowledge you? Anybody there who can tell us where you are? Okay, I can see you from Sierra Leone. I can see you from Ikeja. I can see you from Freetown. I can see from even U.S. Mary Maggie is from Buffalo, New York City. Thank you for joining us. Um, who else? Um, I can also see from American Shelf, Kenema, so we are alone. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate all of you. And... Um, let me give you the announcement again, which I did before we started this session. I would like you to please pay attention to this. A major, major focus of this workshop of this week, this celebration is actually to help you start your own business. And so the US government in Nigeria has put together a training program for you. And anyone from all the West African region can register for this. And the most important thing is that whoever is registering must be in the American space or shelf. You can't say, I stay at home and say you want to take it. Uh, you may want to, but we want people to come in so that we are sure you're actually following through on the training. And is entrepreneurship essentials, navigating the path to successful business startup. And this is going to be huge. Uh, we have invited qualified hands and we encourage you to be part and parcel of this. I will keep it open uh, while I do the vote of thanks, even for every one of us 
who are on this program. Uh, without much ado, I will want to appreciate all our speakers today. Ajaratu, thank you very much for me, Jane. Let's put our hands together for her again. Also, we want to appreciate the president of AWE in Nigeria. We have um, Adi, I always make that mistake, but I will not make that mistake again, Mrs. Adibisi or Deleye uh, from Lagos. Let's put our hands together also for her. I also would like to thank all our directors, all our volunteers who have made this uh, program successful today. Tomorrow is another day. I want you to invite people. Remember, we're giving certificate of um, um, for this for your attending this session. Four out of five. So make sure you sign before you go. And once you've done so. Uh, we know that um, we'll work and get this across to you. So with that, I want to say thank you, everybody, for coming on this program. We hope to see you at the same time tomorrow. And so for now, we say bye-bye to you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.